Hey everyone, my name is Misba, and today we're going to look at building an application for document search. And in this case, we will upload a PDF and then we can search through the content of document semantically. And the cool thing about this application is that document could be in a given language, let's say English, for example, and the user query could be in a totally different language, let's say Hindi or Mandarin. And if the answer to the question is contained in the document, our system, our application is going to provide that answer. And this is across over a hundred languages that are supported. So let's look at how this could be done. And in this particular case, we're going to use bubble, which is a no code tool. It makes it easy to build a full stack web application. And also it has database associated that we're going to utilize in, in our application. So the assumption over here is that at least you have some information about bubble and how it works. If not, I would suggest for you to watch maybe a few beginner tutorials. The way this application works is we are going to select a PDF file. And in this case, Constitution of the United States, I'm going to name it Constitution and probably give it some description, Constitution of the US, and then process the file. Once we process this file, it's going to call our backend API and do the magic. Now, if we go to the search option, I can see the document selected over here and then say, what is this document about? and is going to look through the uh, the database and then give us the answer. So what's happening in the background is quite interesting. So for any given document QA system, it looks something similar to this, where you have a document ingestion arm and then the, the search or retrieval arm. And what happens is for the document ingestion arm, we take the document and PDF in our case, extract the text out of it, split the text into small chunks and then save these chunks as numbers. So we convert the text into numbers. And this conversion is done using Cohere's multilingual API. And in our case, you could utilize other APIs as well. Since we're doing the multilingual document search, we're going to utilize uh, Cohere's embedding model and then save that into a vector database. So once we have that information saved, we can then search using a similar pattern where we take the text and convert it to numbers and then compare those numbers to numbers and then get results from that. So I kind of like to visualize this as two separate systems and kind of decouple them. So if we decouple them, then we see that the document ingestion arm is taking PDF and saving all the way to the vector database, which is quadrant in this case. And the second is the search query. We're you know, doing the same thing where we convert it to numbers, compare it against the available vectors we have in our database, and then get the relevant answers and then send it to the user as a sentence or a paragraph or so, and to convert from these relevant chunks to the answer where you can use OpenAI API in this case. So this is something that I would like for you to remember. These are gonna be two API calls that we make to the backend. So the application is quite simple, utilizing the component library of Bubble where I drag and drop the header, then other than that, there are a few text um, elements over here, a file uploader over here. So if you were to search for file uploader, you'll notice that. And then a few additional input as well as text box over here. Pretty simple. You've used Bubble before. The good thing about the file uploader is that it takes the user file and then saves it to an S3 bucket or a storage that Bubble uses. And it gives you a link that you can utilize later. So most of the work is done under the the process file button here and there's a workflow under the hood that we are going to use so the first thing here is we're just showing a loader just a css element a visual element which shows that you know, there's something processing and the main part is these two steps step two and step three where first is we take the description of the file the saved url of the file as well as the name given by the user and then we save it in our database. So I just created one data type, which is document. And then I am saving those documents here. As you can see, the 
three fields or something that I have in the input form. And then once we save that, we take it in our workflow and then send that over as API call to the backend. So two things were taken, collection name as well as the file URL, and then configuring an API call. So if you have worked with Bubble, then probably you know about this API connector. It's available as a plugin. I'm calling the backend with two different calls, as you might remember from the diagram shown earlier, where we have the embedding call and then the, the retrieval or search call. And where do we get that from? That's where we're going to look at the next steps. So what I've done is I am going to go to this uh, particular repo and the link to that will be available in the video description. So once you go to that, you'll notice it has some code associated with it. You don't have to worry about the code, uh, but the main part is that there is an embed link as well as a retrieve link. So we'll use that in future. So again, you don't have to worry about the code if you're not too familiar with Python. If you are familiar, feel free to play around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fork the repo here and then create a fork. Once you do that, it will be available under your account. And then now you're going to go to render.com and create a new account. And once you create a new account, then you're going to hit the new web service. So once you hit the new web service, then you'll see a page like this. But you just have to make sure that you have connected your GitHub account. If not, it will give you an option to connect the GitHub account. You'll just follow a few steps and you'll give permissions for render to connect with any of the repositories. So you can select either your account, or organizational account, or uh, private or public repositories. There are multiple options. But anyways, so once you give that option, it will show you the uh, repos it has access to. And then you hit connect to that particular repository. With that, you end up on a page like this, where you just have to define a name for the application. Most of the info here is pulled automatically since it already detected that we are using a Flask based server. So you don't necessarily have to change any of this. But if your users are going to be in a different region, feel free to change this. Other than that, everything else looks fine. We're using free tier in this case. If you have a paid account, then you'll see there's low latency and the application doesn't sleep. And if you want to avoid that, you can use a paid account. Now, one important thing here is to set the environment variables. So if you click advance, then you will have option to add environment variables. So once you hit add option, you'll see something like this key value. And that's what I have here. So these are the environment variables you want to configure. And you might want to type it exactly as it's shown here, where we have cohere API key, open AI API key, quadrant URL and API key. So cohere API key, you can go to cohere's website and create a free account. And then once you create a free account, you have an option to create an API key. And then you just bring that over over here. Same thing with open AI. Uh, there's quite a lot of documentation which can help you get these API keys in case if, if you're wondering how to do that. For Quadrant, I'll just quickly walk you through that. Once you create a Quadrant account, you'll see that you have options similar to this. You just have to create a cluster. So you hit create cluster, give it some name. And then once you create that, you'll see something along this line, the active cluster you have, you can get the cluster URL that we will use in our application. That's from here. And second thing is you can create a new API key. And once you create that, you will have basically an API key that you can copy over into the application and provide that over here. Now, the only additional thing that you might want to remember is the Python version. This is the version I used to build the application, the backend, and I tested with that. So it should work fine with 3.11.1. So you might want to basically give the value exactly as is. Once you do that, you can hit the, the create web service button here, and then you should have a working application. The first screens are probably going to look like this, where it will run a bunch of different things and it will get the application working and running. And once your service is live, then you are pretty set here on the back end. The main thing that you're going to need is this URL. This is where we're going to copy over. You can test it if it's working fine. So if you click that URL, it will show a blank page like this, just with the hello world. This is to test that, okay, it's working fine. And then you take this URL over to Bubble 
and we're going to configure the API calls. So I'm just creating a new API call, just give any name. The main thing is the, the content type. So you can add a new header, a shared header with the content type as application JSON, and then create a, a new API call. Basically, you just click this button, add another call. So I've created two of those. One is to embed. So this is the URL we use slash embed. This is something I added here. And for that, I'm using as an action so I can hit the button and run this. Main thing is to configure your body uh, for JSON, as you see, so you can take exactly as is. And also you can test it out by initializing the call um, using any given name. Now, the value of this file URL, you could use any online PDF file. Feel free to take this URL or any given URL and then initialize the call. And then on the retrieval side, similar configuration. The only difference is that it has retrieve after slash instead of embed. And then also this is a little different here. So you can take this JSON as is and then you can test it out with the same name that you had given here with any given query and then it should give you a result as what is the document so if you have done this and it works fine basically there is no error if there are some issues then make sure that your render application that you had deployed have proper keys and values for all the apis as well as it's working fine and it shows that it's live now, once that is done, the API calls are pretty much set in your workflow. You're just going to call again that API, the embed API that we defined. And once you do that, then you send over the file for processing. So I'm kind of having some text setting and we just say, OK, the file is, is processed successfully and then hide it and then reset the input element. So then you can upload a new file and also the CSS element can be hidden after this. And that's pretty much it for the main index page. And then the second part of that is the search. So this is the index page that we have uploading document. The search is where we're going to have a few elements. So the document search is going to look pretty similar where we added a header here as a component, a few text elements, also a drop down menu. So this drop down menu is going to go through the dynamic choices of document and it's going to search for the document. And I'm just sorting it by created date and as descending. And the additional thing is the option that I want to select is current options name. And once you do that, this should take care of users selecting a particular document to search through. Now, the other aspect is the user query. So this is just a plain input box and a button that users can hit for search. And then answer is displayed over here as another text response. So the way this works is once a user hits search, then we're going to hit the loader as shown earlier, just for aesthetic purposes. Uh, second is it's going to make this backend server call, right? So this is the API that we set. And in this, we send the collection name and query. And then I'm not saving the result of the query. This is something you could do. You can make another data table and then save each user query as well. For me, I'm just setting it as a state of one particular element, which is here. So this is the group search results and I set a new state, which is search response as text. Now I can basically assign a value to that. And once I do that, I can take the response from API call and then save it to this particular state. And anytime user performs a new search, it's going to keep refreshing. So it's not going to save it. And again, if you want, you could save that as well. And other than that, it's just showing a few different elements, resetting the input values. So that's pretty much it. With that, you can call the, the backend API and select a particular document and show the results to the users. So just a two page application. So with that, you have actually accomplished quite a lot. You built a bubble based front end with the logics involved. And then you deployed a backend on render, which is actually a Python flask based backend and that contains all the logic all the api calls calling the open ai api calling the go here api calling the quadrant database and we use langchain framework 
and you can see the power of Langchain that just a few lines of code in that Python file does a lot of work for you so you don't have to, to worry about writing individual code or API calls. And just to test it out, we can see how our application is working. I'm just going to ask what is this document about, again in English. And then it's going to search and summarize for us that this document is the United States Constitution. And I'm going to test it with a different language. We could use German or I'm going to say Hindi and test it out. So with the same file. So we have the similar answer here, which is again, it says that it's the US Constitution. Now, again, you might have multiple documents and you can just search within one of those documents, or you could also build logic where you can search across all the documents and it gives you a source of where it's pulling the information. So there are many possibilities, but this is just beginning with a very simple app that you can search within one given document in over a hundred languages. So if you have any questions or if you would like to build LangChain applications, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, on LinkedIn. DMs are open. Looking forward to hear from you. Thank you.